Hello, welcome back to the Bossed Up Single Mom, where we empower moms to be whatever they want to be. I'm your host, Melissa Clayton. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really, really excited today. We have with us Kristen Stetz. Kristen and I, um, this is actually the first time we're meeting, but we are affiliated through a Fast Foundations Mastermind facilitated by Chris and Lori Harder. It was an awesome experience. Um, I'm, thanks, Kristen. Thank you for being here. I would love for you to fill in all of our listeners, exactly the way you told me what you do, what you, how you do, what you do, <laughs> what you said earlier. Tell us what, who you are, what you do, and how you serve people. Yeah, so I am a life coach, or as um, people like to tell me, they describe me as the joy coach. <laughs> I um, actually, through my journey in life, I really learned that um, we all have we're all created on purpose for a purpose. I believe that in my, in my heart of hearts, yes. so many of us are caught up in what the world is telling us we should be. We're so conditioned by the voices of the world that we've really lost touch with that voice inside of us. And so my calling in life is to really come alongside people and help them learn to discern that voice inside of them versus the voices of the world. So they can really come back to back to relationship with that voice inside of them and really live out the purpose for which they were created. That's so good. It's so like deep and I can tell people need what you do. And so I'm so glad people like you exist in the world. <laughs> um, before we really dig into the interview, I want to just rapid fire some random questions. Kristen, what is your dream car? My dream car is a 1963 Corvette split window, preferably in a maroon color. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's the most specific answer I've ever gotten. I appreciate that about you. I grew up <laughs> no. in the auto aftermarket. So I love it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, beach or mountains for you? Yes. Um, yes to both. Yeah. I don't have a preference. I am an avid hiker. I have summited, um, my highest summit is a 17,000 foot mountain in Peru, Rainbow Mountain. Okay. I've hiked active volcano in Bali. I'm COVID willing hiking in the Dolomites this summer. I absolutely love the mountains and I love hiking, but there is something to be said for the beach. You can't, totally agree. you can't replace the sound of the water hitting the, hitting the shore. It's the best. Right? It's so therapeutic. It's so soothing. It's amazing. I'm with you on that. What is your favorite sleeping position? Oh, I'm a side <laughs> sleeper. I sleep on my right side and my shoulder has been paying the price. Oh, you know what? I had a really rough go with my bed. I had to get a memory foam mattress and it totally changed my life. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> Who's your first celebrity crush? Oh, Robert Downey Jr. was my first oh, celebrity crush. Okay. Yeah. He's kind of a shit show, but he is hot for sure. He was a total <laughs> show. So yeah. sad, sad story, you know, interlude, right? I, my first husband died when I was 23. He was an mm -hmm. addict and died by okay. um, his own hand, but I always joked because I joke about everything that Robert Downey Jr. was the first crackhead I ever loved. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by Richard oh, yeah. or River that. Phoenix and Corey yeah. Hay. <laughs> you have a type. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I don't know. If I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what, where are you traveling to next? Do you have travel plans coming out of COVID? I leave on Saturday for Isla Holbosh in, in Mexico. Oh my gosh. How cool. Good. Yeah. Okay, where's that at? <laughs> I don't know anything. So Isla Holash is a small island on the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. That's mm -hmm. about two-ish hours north of Cancun. Okay. And it's a small island just kind of on the border of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Isla what? Holbosh. Oh, I was the Isla well, Mujeres, yeah. and I feel like they're really close by. Yeah, um, that's fine. It's right yeah. off of the coast of Cancun. Okay, say hi to home, my homies for me. Over there. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> that place is beautiful. Okay, last question. Um, what song always gets you out on the dance floor? Oh my gosh. So I'm the designated purse watcher when I go out with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you more, would you say like a wallflower then? Um, yeah, I'm not a huge dancer. Um, I dance and sing out loud in the car all the mm -hmm. time. Um, if I'm at a concert, I'm always shaking it, but mm -hmm. I feel really weird on a dance floor. I'm so glad you said that. Just because I asked the question doesn't mean I like to dance either, right? Just, I feel so awkward dancing. It doesn't like, it's supposed to be this really spontaneous, like, 
thing that just like makes release almost, but I just am like, uh, you know, like I just people are out on the dance floor drunk and they're spilling cocktails <laughs> on my shoes and like my feet are sticking to the floor. Yes. And I'm like, how is this, this fun? Is not fun? I just want to have like karaoke in my car. Like that's my, I don't know. I feel like we're kind of on the same level there. <laughs> okay, good. I found my soulmate. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So you definitely, let's get down to like the meat of the interview, right? Let's find out about you as an entrepreneur and a mom. Um, you've had the journey, a huge journey, like lots of stuff has happened. You mentioned, you know, years ago, you lost your first husband. We were talking earlier, you're, um, you're recently divorced in your second marriage. So what has being in business for yourself? What has that journey been like for you? Um, you know, trying to be, being this awesome mother to your kids, I'm sure. And, and trying to support them through all of your big hills and valleys that you've had throughout your life. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think about like my journey as an entrepreneur and my dad was a small business owner. My mom was a small business owner. So, you know, I always had how to be in business for yourself modeled for you, mm -hmm. but, um, there was always kind of like this, how to do it. Right. And having come from corporate America, there's kind of like the instruction manual on what to do next. Right. And what I learned as a small business owner is there's not really like a how to, um, and so many people have advice on how to do it, but you really have to just figure out what works for you. Cause entrepreneurship is not a one size fits all journey. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. You have to really decide, you know, what are your non-negotiables and what are the things that you can be flexible on? And just because the world says we work Monday through Friday, nine to five, doesn't mean you have to work Monday through mm -hmm. Friday, nine to five. And just because, you know, people say you take an hour lunch break and then you get back to it, doesn't mean you have to do that. Mm -hmm. You can build a schedule around um, what you need out of life. And I look at my kids now, you know, my kids are 20 and 22 and both back living at home right now. And it's like, I block out time. My son, um, he works overnights and, you know, he comes home from work and at around seven 30 in the morning and I get up and I spend a half hour with him instead of getting mm -hmm. ready to race to work. Right. Right. And, you know, I spend some time in the middle of the day with my younger child, you know, to just kind of catch up. Or if I want to take time off in the middle of the day to go for a walk, because I live in Minnesota and oh my God, the sun is shining. So <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I'm not trying to fit myself into a box and no small business owner should feel like they should fit themselves into a box. Oh my gosh. As a recovering rule follower, but also an entrepreneur of like 10, 12 years now, that's, it took me so long to figure out, like I get to make the rules. And that's the beauty. It's the struggle, but also like the beauty and all of it for people that just like, for people like myself and for someone listening and they hear that come out of you, <laughs> I wish I had heard that 10 years ago, you know, like you don't have to follow the rules and that's, what's so amazing about it and having the flexibility for totally. your kids. I even have, you know, I have corporate clients all over the world and it's, it's like, if somebody wants to schedule a meeting with me before nine o'clock in the morning, that's not negotiable for me. Mm -hmm. My morning time is from seven in the morning until nine in the morning. And that is my time. And so, you know, don't feel guilty creating boundaries when you need to manage your own time. Right. You know, if mm -hmm. I take off time in the middle of the day, that's my time. And my clients don't get to dictate when I'm available for them. Oh my gosh. Boundaries are everything. And again, I needed to hear that 10 years ago. So <laughs> We're doing a real service here. I can tell already <laughs> what, as an entrepreneur, what's your big goal? You know, a lot of people have financial goals or impact goals. What, what's yours? Yeah. Um, I mean, my biggest personal goal is to be able to work from anywhere. Mm. I have an insatiable case of wanderlust. And so mm. being stationary is very difficult for me. Um, but I want to be able to do that in a scenario where I can still always maintain a home for my kids to come back to. Um, as far as my business goals and my impact goals, yeah, I feel so many of us are caught up in the shoulds of life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really my um, calling in life to help people learn to stop paying attention to the shoulds and mm -hmm. start paying attention to their desires, their greatest desires. And so you know, my personal mission is to help thousands and thousands of people to be able to find 
that calling in their heart and reconnect with that voice in their soul so they can live the life they long for. Ah, okay. That is intense. That's so good. <laughs> I feel like get out of my head. seriously. <laughs> like, and I know I'm not alone. So many people think what you're, you know, they have these same feelings. And so, um, that's amazing. That's amazing. Let's talk about successes versus failures really quick. Yeah. What would be, uh, you want to talk about one of your biggest successes? It doesn't have to be, you know, you could take that anywhere. Totally. You know, I think one of my biggest successes is realizing or recognizing that I'm okay just the way I am. Um, I am a recovering perfectionist. I was that kid who, if I brought home an A minus, my parents were like, why isn't it an A plus, right? <laughs> oh my God, um, I have always been an overachiever. I started taking college classes when I was in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. um, and I did all the things, right? I checked all the boxes and I did all the things I was supposed to do. And my life still fell apart. You know, I was a widow at 23. I was raising two kids by myself. I didn't have... I didn't have shit. Like I sometimes had to feed my kids from the food shelf and I had to borrow money from my dad to not lose my house to foreclosure. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't figure out why for the life of me, like if I checked all the boxes and I did all the things I was supposed to do, why was it so hard? And it's when my youngest child almost died by suicide. And I realized that like, I had been doing all of this shit that I was supposed to be doing and holding my kids accountable for, accountable for doing all the shit they were supposed to be doing, because that's what the world said we had to do. And I realized I was doing it all wrong. Like I had spent so much time trying to be the person the world thought I should be. And I had spent so much time encouraging my children to be the people that the world thought they should be and not really paying attention to who I was inside and who they were inside that it was, we were never going to find happiness in that capacity. And so mm -hmm. realizing that I was built a certain way and I am, um, I I'm perfect the way I perfectly imperfect. Mm -hmm. I always say mm -hmm. exactly the way I am. I am enough and I don't have to check somebody's boxes to be worthy, that was the turning point in my life. And I think recognizing that is my greatest success. There's so much wisdom in that. And just recognizing, like, I love that you took that question. It wasn't like, oh, I accomplished X, Y, and Z, or I did this. You're like, I realize that I am enough. I am worthy. I am all these things that we, so many people are working so hard to figure out. And, um, you recognizing that you have figured that out, but also recognizing that as like this huge, that is in itself a huge accomplishment. So I mean, like, congratulations, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's huge. That's well, huge. And it's like, just because you realize it doesn't mean like one day you wake up and you realize it and you're like, oh, so yeah. rainbows mm -hmm. and unicorns. Right. But like my dad and I always joke, like who to thunk, I'd be the one who had my shit figured out. Right? You're woke. You are woke. <laughs> The reason I have my shit figured out isn't because like I took some, you know, magic formula and made life happen for me. It's because I stopped trying to be somebody I wasn't. And I really mm -hmm. focused on who I was. Don't you think, um, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking 43. Okay. You're a little bit ahead of me. I'm 38 and a half, but I find that the older we get, the more we find, like, I just think that's like one of the most beautiful things about aging. If we're talking about like acceptance and things is just, you have less shits to give, you know, as you get older and I'm looking forward to myself, maybe five years from now, maybe I'll have the opportunity to be where you are. <laughs> I'm very well, excited about that. About, like it's Mark Manson, the author of the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Mm -hmm. He always says, save your fucks for magical shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Yes. Amen. Right. So good. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's flip that on its head. So what about failures? Talk about maybe one of your failures and something you learned from it. Yeah. So I have a difficult time with that question, just in the, in the context of failures, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, I think about life as a series of choices. I, my branding is journey to joy. I'm all about the journey. I'm all about finding that joy within, within you. And even when you have that intrinsic joy, that seed of joy that's planted deep in your soul, even on your shittiest, shittiest of days, mm -hmm. you still have that, right? That can never be taken from you. And I've had a lot of really shitty days over the course of my life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, 
you know, like my best friend died when I was 18 and, you know, losing a husband to suicide mm-hmm. and almost losing a child and divorce and you know, like <laughs> shitty, shitty things, mm-hmm. right? Hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, when you look at life and you look at the things that I did to put myself in bad situations, you know, I could say that was a huge failure, but for me, like when I get up and I look in the mirror every day, I like the person I see. Mm -hmm. And the person I see is this amalgamation of all of the good and all of the bad. And so I guess my biggest failure would be trying to hide the person that I am to -hmm. fit somebody else's idealistic view of Mm -hmm. the person I should be, because there were a lot of years that I hid behind facades. There were a lot of years that I hid behind shame. There are a lot of years I hid behind guilt. There were a lot of years I tried to get, you know, I was a single mom for 11 years and the other moms, they were fucking mean, Yeah, you know? And so it's like, I tried really hard to be that mom. The other moms would like, and Mm -hmm. I realized, you know, maybe that was my biggest failure is not being who I was because I wanted to fit. But clearly you figured it out, right? You learned plenty from that. Like (laughs) you are, as we said, woke, so you're good now. And that's kind of a loaded question. I don't believe there are failures in life either. I think that there, it's all just a series of things that are happening for us, you know, and we have so much to learn from them. And so that's kind of like failures, probably the worst word ever, but I love hearing how guests always, almost always say it wasn't a failure. There was something good that came from it. So I'm glad it happened or whatever. I think all the time, like if one of those things would be different, one of the things that where I fell on my face, if one of those things would be different, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I really Mm -hmm. like me. Right. I love it. I love it. Uh, Just a couple more questions. If you're looking at another mom, maybe you 10 years ago or whatever, and she's, she's not as woke. I don't know where do the days woke, right? So she's not as woke as you and she's wanting to step out, start her own business. She's scared. You had so many valuable experiences, right? And so what would you say to someone in your shoes or maybe even just yourself 10 years ago? Yeah. You know, I think about, um, Lori Harder and how she always says, you know, take messy action every day that helps to move the needle. Right. And fear was probably my biggest deterrent. Um, when I was in my, 20s and 30s and stepping out on my own and really doing or living the life that I wanted to have. Um, And so, you know, I would say to me 10 years ago or to a woman who is afraid to step out is, you know, just take one small step in faith. It doesn't have to be the giant leap. You don't have to jump out of the airplane, right? Mm -hmm. Just take one small step forward and try that on and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when that feels good, take the next small step, right? You don't have to have the perfect plan to get moving. Just take one small step every day. Yeah. So often I think we all get stuck on the how, right? And then that prevents us. We, there's so many hows, but it's really just taking those baby steps. I love that you said that. Well, and we can convince ourselves that we need all of these things that prevent us from starting, right? Like I can't start until I have mm-hmm. a website. I can't start until I have, you know, a product. more experience. Yeah. So, yeah. All the things. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Yes. So just, just do the thing. I love that. What's one common myth. I mean, you've certainly over the years with all your, you know, being a single mom, we didn't even touch on it. You had babies, basically babies, a, a baby and a toddler, right? Yeah. And, um, my son was two and my um, younger child was six months old when their mm-hmm. dad died. Right. And so that must've been so hard. You're grieving your husband. You're trying to be the best mom you can to your kids. Um, trying to find success in your career. What's, what's one common myth about being a single mom that you would like to debunk or discuss? Gosh, there's so many, right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like pick one. Um, you know, This doesn't have to do with work, but it's something that I always told myself is, you know, who's going to want me with all this baggage, right? And I'm sorry, I'm just crying now. It's like, yes, yes, totally. Yes. Because we think about all of these experiences that we have as baggage, as things that hold us down, as things that we, nobody's going to want us to bring into our next relationship, right? And 
that was something I believed for a long time. I was a single mom for 11 years Mm -hmm. and I, one of my friends always called me the saboteur. Like I would sabotage every (laughs) relationship because I was like, nah, you know, he's not going to want me in the long run. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the moment we allow ourselves to believe that our children, our experiences, our baggage and aren't things that we can bring into a relationship as something that adds value to another person's life is the, is the minute we hold ourselves back. Mm-hmm. You know, I had mentioned I'm, you know, divorced about a year ago from a really amazing human and he's mm-hmm. my kid's stepdad and he is the only dad my kids I've ever, my kids have ever known. And right. He doesn't have any children of his own. He always calls my kids his gift with purchase. Mm-hmm. And I love it. He is still their dad, even though he's not married to me anymore. And he will always be their dad. And had I decided that I wasn't good enough for him because I had this baggage, that beautiful relationship that he and my children have wouldn't exist. I would have robbed them of that. I have decided this episode is just for me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you have said, you're speaking literally directly into my soul. I have walked, I mean, I, I have three kids of my, we, I mean, you and me, we're just getting to know each other, but I have three kids and I mean, their dad has actually told me nobody's going to want you and all this stuff. And I know it's not true, but you know, people say things and it sticks with you mm-hmm. and knowing that the right person, it doesn't matter. And, you know, and it, it is part of an experience and just making sure that you're leaving yourself open to it. And, you know, and things happen. The right person wants to be a part of your kids' lives. Mm-hmm. Totally. So that's so important. For, I know that it, because I needed to hear it. So many other women needed to hear that too. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. You are a bossed up mom. We are here on the boss. <laughs> I'm the single, you know, I guess we're both bossed up single moms, but can you talk about, this is the last question just to finish up with when you hear bossed up, what does that mean to you? <sighs> bossed up to me really just means empowered. I feel like As a bossed up mom, we are deciding to empower ourselves to take control of our lives. And it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or not, you could work in corporate America, you could work part-time at Starbucks. It doesn't matter. When you choose to take control of your path, when you choose to do the damn thing because it feels good to you and fuck what everybody else has to Mm -hmm. say about it, Mm -hmm. you are a bossed up mom because you are taking control of your path. 